I've already kind of talked about these, so I'm not going to belabor the point, but you heard from Blanca Simpson. Blanca Simpson said he was wearing like a polo shirt when he left. He was wearing this shirt in the Vinnie Vine. She recognized both of those. He, of course, turned over the T-shirt that he was wearing when, when law enforcement arrived. And then you heard Blanca say he later tried to convince her that he was wearing a Vinnie Vine shirt. Three shirts in one day, and a fourth one he tried to get Blanca to say. And you, and you heard her testimony. She felt very uncomfortable by that. Multiple changes of shoes in the day. He wouldn't be wearing those shoes if he were out riding the property. I've already mentioned the text from Maggie that Alec wants me to come home, but he can't even be clear about that point because that doesn't fit with his narrative. Marion Proctor says the same thing, but he can't admit that because that doesn't fit with his narrative. She was surprised that Maggie didn't go along to Almeida. And then she said, Alec made an interesting comment, one of many, some of which came from that stand that we'll talk about in a little bit. Whoever did this thought about it for a really long time. Why would he say that? Because he told you that it was just random vigilantes from the boat case of which there is no evidence whatsoever that you've seen in this record. Trials depend on evidence. There has to be evidence to make a decision. And his claims trying to manufacture something about the boat case, there's been no evidence whatsoever of any specific other individual. There has to be evidence to consider, not just mere allegations that have no basis in any sort of evidence. Whoever did this thought about it for a really long time. I think if you think about the defendant's statements and some of the things he says, a lot of times he says things in one context, but he means them in another. When he says things like, I hurt the ones I love the most. We talked about Shelley. After Randolph's funeral, he shows up early. She might have said Wednesday, but there was other information that Randolph's funeral was on Monday. But anyway, shows up with something blue, shows up early, wants to come in, goes and moves the vehicles, and then there's that raincoat, huge raincoat. She calls it a tarp, but it's a huge raincoat. And it's got a ton of GSR on the inside, and it's found in a closet upstairs. States for 11. He was a busy guy at Almeida, as we just saw. He was moving around, kept hitting off of his Suburban. And then, of course, as you heard, he was with family for the next few days. After the funeral, he's back. And it was weird enough and interesting enough that Shelley said something about it. I'm also saying that in her experience, it was unusual for him to come that way. Then we have the defendant. And his many statements. Went through a lot with the defendant who told you that the reason why he was telling this, you, you this new story was because he was paranoid because he had a bag of pills in his pocket, because he had a distrust of Slynn, 
because David Owen asked him about his relationship with Maggie. And his law partners told him that he should have an attorney present, which one is in here, one of his law partners sitting in the back. Do this. I understand. Yeah. I totally yeah. understand. Yeah. So you don't you don't have any problem yeah. with it. I asked him repeatedly, is this the point where you decided to lie? At which point did you decide to lie? I hate to have to do this. I understand. I'm gonna do that twice. I or was it this point when he first says I was at the house? I was at the house. Or was this the point? He said, he mentioned specifically, and he kept adding factors, and one of the things was, well, Dave Owen asked me how my relationship was. This question, this is when he decided to lie? Right, you know, that is wonderful. I mean, I'm sure we had little things here and there, but we had a wonderful marriage, wonderful relationship. But he digs in on the point. What did you do today? Were you at the office or? No, I was home. I came home, falling out and messed around. I, I, uh, I was up at the house. I laid down, took a nap on the couch, probably, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes. I got up, I called Maggie, didn't get an answer, and I left to go to my mom's. She had said... This is June 8th at 1.21 in the morning. And he's admitted to you that he's lying right there. Look how easily he did it. About such a crucial thing. And she's very good about answering the phone, so that was odd, or calling me back. Mm -hmm. So that was odd, but it wasn't that big a deal. It was odd, but not that big a deal. But again, he's enough to say it was odd. He's enough to make all those calls while he's doing 283 steps, but he doesn't drive 50 seconds down to the kennels. Going to the next interview. Again, what's the tone of this interview? How is he being treated? Pretty traumatic. That's okay. Um, yeah, I know so, you yeah. need to ask me. You ask me what you need to so, is that an aggressive interview? Is that something to make somebody paranoid? I'm a defendant in a civil case involving my son. I told you about mm -hmm. the boat wreck. Yes, sir. And there were some motions coming up in that on Thursday, and I was mostly just getting ready for those things, and okay. then other junk. Mentions the boat case. Paul and Paul left. And I'm assuming, you know, I'm assuming Paul left okay. because of, you know, gotcha. what happened. I mean, I'm assuming Paul yeah, yeah. went to the kennels. Okay. Um, and what did you do once once Maggie and Paul left? I stayed in the house. Okay. And I was watching TV, looking at my phone, and I actually fell asleep on the couch. Okay. And what time did you... You know, I don't know exactly what time I woke up, but when y'all get my phone, you know, I think one of the first things I did when I got up was call Maggie mm -hmm. because I was going to my mom's. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I texted her because I checked my phone. And what time we say the text was, Jim? It's like 9.06. I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I got it written down for you. I showed you the other yes, night, yes, didn't I? Yes, sir. I got so, it. you know, I texted her. So I called her just before that. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, she she didn't answer at that point, um, and I left to go to 
my mom's. So easy for him to do. And you say you said you laid down and, and took a little nap, and when you got up, Maggie and Paul was gone. Or did they leave when you laid down? Or before I, I, I believe that. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. But they weren't there when you woke up around the nine o'clock mark or so when when you made the call to Maggie to, to let her know you were going to. No, nobody was in that house when I when I left. Adding more detail, it's just lies. Watch how he responds to this one. Watch what his head does. See if you observe that yourself when he's over there looking you in your eyes and trying to convince you of something. Trying to narrow that the, the last time that Paul and you saw Paul and Maggie's when y'all were eating supper. Yes, sir. When the when when Paul's phone came out, did you you just pick it up and put it on you know place it back down on him or you know yeah I did not try to open it or anything you know I just I don't know how I had in my mind that I needed to not mess anything up I had that I had that you know. Going to the third interview on August 11th. And after dinner, went back in home. Went to the kennels or? You know, I don't know exactly how that went. Um, I stayed on the couch and I dozed off. Very specific recollections for y'all when he testified with his new story that had never been heard until last week. Did he and I know? But Rogan Gibson told me about uh, the dog's tail and somebody saying his leg was broken. Well, right there, he was down at the kennels. Shaking his head forward. Um, you were just down there with Paul. You left and went back to the house for dinner. You know, I mean, Paul and I were just knocking around up at the shop, the shed, the kennels, and the, you know, just the whole property. And and that was before dinner yesterday. And you didn't go back down there after dinner until your return trip from visiting your mother? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I've got information that Paul was on the phone. And 
Davis, you were in the background. And you were in the background. And that was prior to no. Yeah. I, I heard Rogan Gibson ask me if I was up there. He said he thought it was me. Was it you? At, at 9 o'clock? Yes, sir. No, sir. Not if my times were right. Yes, sir. 